Welcome to the part 2 of Auxiliary Boilers Advanced Curves. First of all, I'd like to thank you that everyone loved these sessions. We will keep it about for one hour and we will have a lot of information here. And it's really, really nice to see that. So today we will continue with our boiler. We start to overview all the accessories of the boiler that installed. And let's run through and start quickly as much as possible. In the front of you, you have the relief valve, the safety valve, otherwise, which is used just to protect the boiler for the overpressure and avoid all the internal parts to be overstressed and the boiler reach its maximum pressures. So one of the crucial parts and one of the most important things is the internal pressure and the temperature. We try as much as possible to avoid our boiler tubes to be overheated. Otherwise, we will damage and stress the boiler structure. Bad design boilers will be prone for the cracks, but cracks also can be uh, and the first day is initiated from the bad operation and the improper operation from the operator. As you can see, there is a lot of parts inside. So there is a lot of moving parts. And as uh, the experience show that the most, if we have more moving parts, the more damage we can get and the more worn parts will be uh, during the time let's look like how the flame eye will look from the volcano company this kind of flame eyes mostly installed on the mitsubishi boilers on the other hand you have this kind of flame eyes siemens r9 which is installed on the alborg boilers both of them it is necessary to check for the good operation you just uh, can let's say pull it out when your boiler working and you will see after that that you will have an alarm on your control room which says flame failure let's see here how it done how it done with our colleagues this is how it look like on the mitsubishi boiler on the top and there are two pairs of them installed here we have our burner i really really like the mitsubishi boilers because they are really, really functional, really easy to remove the main burner, which is here, the pilot burner, which is really, really small uh, if you compare with the Alborg. And everything is so easy to fit and to isolate. So even though you need to pick up the swiddler, it will be in some minutes and you save a lot of time. Also, the parts of the Mitsubishi boiler, if we're comparing with the Alborg, as, as much lighter as possible so really uh, i have worked both of them and i really like the mitsubishi they are not creating any problems if you are making everything fine and proper as the manufacturer says so in the albor warlocks from the other hand you need to be specific you need to be careful for some points and also experience it's really necessary on that boilers. Let's look like another accessories which is installed and it's called smoke density meter. It is really important uh, accessory. It's uh, the smoke density can tell us a lot, can tell us the overall operation of the boiler. And uh, if we have any an economical combustion, it will show because there will be additional fumes created and uh, all the boilers and most of the boilers are adjust somehow so they will not be uh, overproducing this uh, carbon fumes but as much as possible the oxygen percent to be lower uh, as much as possible and why I'm saying that because we cannot adjust the oxygen content a lot 
there is limits always there is limits on, on adjustments that we are doing and we must be sure before we make an adjustment how it will reflect to our boiler um, okay and sometimes it's necessary to lower down the oxygen content but you need to know whatever you are doing that you are doing a proper measurement because uh, me measures because otherwise maybe there is some else the problem and you just create a di different operation uh, range for the, your equipment so never make o2 adjustment content too much down unless you have checked the co content this is also really really important because maybe you make it too much down okay your oxygen will go down but you will have a lot of carbon uh, production in the line and also all that carbon will go later on to the tanks through the scrubber your scrubber will be also dirty so that's why we need to keep our limits in the center amount so we will not create additional carbon and this additional carbon can make damage also to our uh, oxygen analyzer filtering system it can get clogged and also it's very very important for the operator who operate that equipment and all that system to pass frequently for from the oxygen analyzer see what it indicates see the flow see that there is constant flow it's unchanged and it will not interrupt and also to see the filters the condition of the filters and the sampling that is continuously flowing through the oxygen analyzer smoke density meter so we need to calibrate it before any discharge operation clean the emit in the receiver so sometimes you can remove a part of that one and clean the lenses because otherwise if they became dirty a little bit you will not receive the proper signal from here because one is the emitter and the other is the receiver so if your lenses get dirty you will have a disturbance on your signal and uh, on the output you will get a different signal from the real one check the indication in the engine control room on uh, the boiler monitor to verify the indication normally when the boiler is not working it must be zero or at least let's say one so there's also uh, some limits it cannot be let's say 20 and your boiler will be stop or 30 or 35 so this is um, why it's so important next we have the vent valves we have the air cock which is necessary to open when depressurizing the boiler in the initial start when we step up increase the boiler uh, pressure as you can see there is a drain pipe so whatever water will be accumulated it will be collected here and drop down back to the um, to the boiler um, top part where the steam uh, production um, finally created and we have more much more drier steam so so the, the steam which the water and the steam which will be created will pass the final stage of heating and eventually will be in, in, in enter these holes the clean steam will enter these ho holes uh, passages let's say and later on will be driven to the main steam valve there can be some auxiliary stop valves they can be also bypass valves here between the main line and the main steam valve so you will make a heating a preheating of the line before you open the main steam valve because as i have told most of the problems that we get it's from the sudden increase of the temperature and the pressure through the line so it's stressful the lines are not hot enough and later on we will have some brokerage on the gasket or in the structure of the valves or, or on the piping 
Another thing that is really important to see here, we can have a scoom valve. So this is the surface of the water that can be uh, around here. So we will draw any of dirty from the surface of the top of the border by opening the valve and everything will be uh, expelled to the blow down valve and later on for overboard. Okay, there is for the scum valve, they can be, let's say, some accumulation from the boiler surface water. And that's why it's necessary to remove that uh, surface dirtiness for the reason, for one of the reasons that if we have on the top of the water something, it will reduce the evaporation process. It will be a much cost, costly, let's say, to evaporate the water because we consume the fuel than when we have a clear water and a clear surface of the border. We have a gauge glass here so we can see the level in the steam drum. This is called the steam drum and the bottom part will be called water drum. So that is it. That is how it looks like here. And that's why also it calls dry pipe. So everything that is inserted here, it will be a dry steam. Also, this section of the boiler can be inspected from the manholes, which can be both side and other side. And when you are making any maintenance here or checking the condition, you should always replace the gaskets and verify that you have a smooth and clean surface. Let's move on down. Let's see some pressure transmitters, which is also really important to monitor uh, our boiler and have a good understanding of what is going on inside of our boilers. So as I have told you in the beginning, it's really important that all that accessories are performing good and what you see are the reliable data that is necessary to understanding about your machinery and that's why we need to verify that everything it works properly so you can have a different kind of models for the level control the water control we can see that this is the information that you can get and if it's necessary uh, some information you can find on the labels which exactly says the model the product the range of operation because there can be a different range of operation and some other details the supply for the voltage and the output signal this is a pneumatic positioner also some details that you can find out in, on, on it as you can see it's additional explosion proof type and also we have some uh, feed water pressure transmitters as you can see our boiler it's monitored drum steam pressure transmitter also we have a lot of transmitters which all that signals we can see uh, in the engine control room, we can see uh, the status of that valve and also all the signals we're going to the boiler main pa panel and for the control section. As you can see here, this is the boiler panels. It shows some details about that. And all that equipment it's really really necessary to check if you have any spares in case one of them goes wrong so there's also some uh, internal parts which is uh, controlled by a mechanical side and from here there is a signal that will be output later on to the boiler uh, panel here And then that signal will be processed from the processor and give an additional 
output there is an input and outputs again so let's say for for example if there is let's say pressure transmitter on the steam drum side which reach the alarm it will send a signal it will send an output signal milliampers to the panel of the border and later on a shutdown signal will be initiated in case we have a exceed the value of the operation let's on uh, now in this uh, image we can see the boiler the top of the boiler this is our safety valves this is the water level transmitters and this is the scum scum valves here for cleaning the surface over and this is the circulation boiler water circulating valves um, here we can see the easing gears uh, on the top this is the easy gears must be tested because if your wires are not properly maintained probably you cannot uh, lift your safety valves and this is where it goes and attach from here to there it's necessary to see if it's moving if your parts are moving and if you can make it because otherwise if there is emergency or something and it's necessary to open the main uh, the safety valves here from the uh, safe distance and will not be operative this is a not good uh, solution and uh, what we can tell a emergency situation the emergency situation can be when your boiler system goes completely off and you cannot uh, shut down your boiler let's say for example your system or your computer get mad or it's stuck the program and the fuel continuously blowing there so what solutions you have you can open or the safety valve will be open uh, later on by themselves this is a precaution if you like to open it before a certain level uh, anyway they will open by themselves if you have tested and they're working properly but anyway you have an additional measure to open or help to open them so uh, it can happen program can be lagged and nowadays okay maybe there is some updates and some new programs so um, just in case that everything will be stuck and the fuel will be supplied but anyway the good thing is that you can stop your uh, supply pumps for the boiler you can stop them locally also in the purifier room or what, whatever place they are located so never close any valves if your pumps are running just stop the pump better if it's necessary and you have a problem that you need to shut down uh, this the source and the supply first of all shut down your pump which uh, create the pressure in the lines and that's why you will cut one of the supplies and you will stop the combustion never shut down the air because if you shut down the air and there is still supply of the fuel this is a dangerous mixture because you have a very very rich mixture on your boiler or a, your incinerator can be also here we can see the float type level sensor there is a float floating there and there is also a shut off valves you, which you can close for an inspection and for a uh, checking and also there is a drain valve if it's necessary to drain because uh, through the time it can be accumulated a lot of uh, debris inside so it will be necessary to blow a little bit so as you can see as the float flows on, on this box here there is some magnet switches so as our floating will be travel through the bottom to the top it will close a certain circuits and send the signal so in the event 
if we, we remove let's say float in water comes from bro if we remove Ah, yes, if we remove the float, yes, and the water comes from the ball, from inside, that means it's a problem. Yes, that is true, because it makes, if the water uh, goes inside, it will not be float anymore, it will be static somewhere, and that means that we need to replace that level float. Yes, that is true, that can be also, that is really important to check that your flow type level sensor also working it's not any uh, damage there and also that here there is still the connection or it will be eroded so how it works how it works when the magnet passes the contact plate will be close and the current will flow through the wire or the circuit let's see that calibration for the level control check the level in millimeters of water column in the boiler panel and compare with the actual in water level gauge uh, if there is a difference change by turning the screw in the level controller 20 milliamps for the lower level and 20 milliamps uh, for the higher normally it must not be 20 milliamps for the lower but must be 40 milliamps here it cannot be 20 and 20 probably there is a mistake here 40 milliamps for the higher because as we know why it's 2040 because the 20 is the lower level and 40 is for the higher so uh, it says that it's necessary to adjust depends where is uh, the level located so at the lower you will set it 20 and also you must check that the gauge show the same thing the actual water level and what the controller sees the controller does not see any level you you will the one who will set up it for the level and that is uh, really necessary to check always check the actual readings with the electronic readings so whatever you see it's exactly the same and also taste them in the, in the other and uh, other ranges yes higher or lower or low low or high high let's see here air trapped in the piping yes it can be if you drain your boiler or if it's after the maintenance and when you fill up again here can be uh, some air trapped in the system so you will not have any indication of the water uh, inside of the boiler uh, you will not get any indication here in the dp transmitter as we have seen at the beginning or you will have a wrong indication there locally in in the con engine control room so what is necessary to do first of all you need to shut off these valves here on the top so you will not have any pressure go from this plug and when you are plugging these top plugs be sure that you are standing really far you have your hands covered your head also covered with a mask so you will not get any hot water on your face on, on your hands first of all you will unplug them both so the pressure already will equalize you will have both atmospheric pressure so it will be equal here it is not necessary to touch any equalization valve here to equalize it, it will be already equalized by uh, the atmosphere pressure so here and here you will have a uh, atmospheric pressure Later on, take some bottle and fill up until the top of the level and plug it. Fill it also here and put the plug back and slowly open both sides from the top and the bottom so the pressure can be now seen. 
because the water was drained here and also was air in the system coming so that's why you had this indication but this can be a prolonged operation or can be prolonged happen maybe you can feel it for one time and next on you will have it again the same problem a wrong indication so you need to repeat all that all that necessary uh, filling up and recommissioning back again so uh, until the air will be excelled we have an example that we make it five or six times and also when the boiler heat up again you will get that so it's good thing that when you fill up you test your boiler you monitoring and see how the level reacts and how the actual level is from the level gauges and compare it to what you receive in the control room um, so mostly yes when you drain your boiler full that is happening but i'm thinking now that it's really interesting that we can prevent that thing we can prevent that when we decommissioning our boiler we just shut off these valves so all the water will remain here and there will not any air trap so after that when we are filling our boiler we will steep keep this shut off valves close and from the air vent we will vent all the water we will see the steam and later we will make a good air venting uh, if you like to test the water level for any alarm, better to do that from the panel of the boiler. There can be some specific points for checking. Never try to equalize the valve or to close one connection or another. Uh, in the most of the cases, you will get some problem with the main brain, which is located here in the DP transmitter. And one good advantage of this system is that it's not sensitive to foam so if there is any foam created you will still get your readings and that will help you in case that you have something wrong on your system even there it will work so let's see and uh, talk about and uh, one moment we just go back here again so probably here the, for the low level must be 4 milliamps and here 20 there is some print mistake because as we can see here clear yes for the 4 milliamperes is uh, also 3 psi if we are, have a pressure gauge in some cases and 20 milliamperes for 100% 15 psi excuse me this is for the comparison yes this is a clear view what means 4 milliamperes and 20 milliamperes and 3 psi and 15 psi what is the differences in general okay in general but it's really really accurate so we have the re reference leg and the variable leg uh, how it calls what you can do also it's really really necessary to know that sometimes it's necessary to blow through the drain valve here to get all the water and all the dirtiness through this piping in the bottom so you will not get uh, any let's say impurities enter your piping and later on you get some uh, wrong readings so here you can see here you can see some uh, measurements start scale it's uh, four milliamperes and here we have 20 milliamperes when the the water level reaches on the top we can see here we can see what is the differences we can see uh, what is the water temperature 
at the beginning and also we can see at the end what is the difference uh, this is a really really nice example how the water increases and how the pressure also changes and all that calculations and also from the density because our density water is dense 197 and later on as you can see the density falls down but we have a higher pressure so the water column times 0 0.9922 this is the density of the water at uh, 40 degrees minus the density um, at 204 degrees 16 bar pressure and what we get we get 69.6 millimeters of water which corresponds to 20 million pairs so it will be it will be a little bit higher yes than this water level this is just an example a really nice example you can see also this is for 4 million pairs this is for 20 million pairs and this is uh, the first example yes for 4 million pairs which we have uh, the water between the connection uh, we have the distance between the connections, yes, and times 0 0.9922 equals 5 to 1 millimeters of water column. It's really, really nice example. So here we can see also uh, the calculations and it depends from the height between the connections so depends which connections we have which is the differential pressure also uh, for calibration the lower connection and the upper connection function test of differential pressure water level transmitter unit high water level minus low water level tests maybe it's not minus now it's high water level and low water level test observe level in the side glass and that's same always saying an indication on the differential pressure transmitter note that shutdowns alarms and cut out functions can be delayed via timers in the control system this is just for your reference the timers can be delayed okay you can adjust the timers but normally you should not do that because the manufacturer did that for you before even you handle the boiler so it was everything set up from the beginning in the manufacturing side so from you it's just to keep and be sure that everything and all the set points are corresponded and nobody change them because I, what i have seen in the some vessels somebody change they like another way of working or they are feeling that this is the best solution but my proposal is never change the settings maintenance blow down when the boiler load is stable and in operation Differential pressure transmitters must be solate the two connections and then open the drain valve slowly. So you solate them and later on drain if you like to do that. To, to pick up all that dirty and sediments that accumulated there. A few seconds it's enough. And then fill the reference leg first and then the variable leg next on here you can see how it, it looks like from a different uh, scheme and this is uh, the water the steam and what uh, each leg uh, reads the reference leg and the variable leg 
the differential pressure transmitter inlet and outlet from uh, let's say inlet from both of them from minus side and from pressure side um, and here we have a, a connection which connects both of the side but normally in the operation this valve is closed and the other two it's open so we will receive the pressure from this side and the pressure from this side and we will see the indication here we have also our drains and also our isolating valves let's move on differential pressure transmitters means level control combination can be used Float system equals detection of level and active alarms and trips. Just a, a note for you. You can keep it. And let's move on to the boiler alarms, which is also really, really important chapter. Low and high water level alarms, which are one of the most important things uh, on the boilers because you can see that when you set your boiler on the emergency function and the emergency setting that that function is still working your boiler can shut down from the low and high water alarms but in case if you are overriding for some reason that uh, alarms you must be sure that you are still controlling your boiler level because otherwise you do not like your boiler to be explode so be really careful and have a proper uh, man power there so you will have both monitoring everything low pressure boiler pressure alarm that's also in the system high and low fuel oil temperature alarms Standby pump change over alarms, cascade tank high salinity alarm in case you have some leakages or some seawater will enter uh, in the system. High conductivity, dissolved solids, conductivity is also temperature dependent. 2% conductivity increasing each 1 degree Celsius. This is just for your reference. Oil section alarm, cascade, there is a oil detection system in case that you have leakage some oil somewhere in the system uh, and you will tell where we can have leakage to the boiler system because everywhere we have water but where we can get it, we can get it on the heater, on the boiler heater where the fuel is heated by the steam so if we have any crack to our auxiliary boiler heater steam heater we can get all the fuel to our um, water system and boiler system and believe me it's really really difficult to remove all that fuel from the boiler it will be really necessary to clean the boiler tubes drain everything chemical cleaning again draining and it will take a really really big time that's why i'm telling always monitor and check and always open the heaters slowly so it will not be stressful for them boiler low low level alarm shutdown protection from overstress and overheating high high level shutdown thermal stress and carry over carry over what we means with that because if the alarm of the boiler will increase so high the water can pass through the main steam valve and later on to the turbines the turbines which is turning with thousands of rpm and we do not like to see that thing Boiler alarms from flame failure, high steam pressure, also alarms can be set it, uh, on the system as a precaution measures. More alarms can be also burner, swing out, 
you can get also lumps depends what kind of border is it and the program low fuel oil temperature high fuel oil temperature force draft fan failure burner door open very high conductivity trip low fuel oil temperature can be for the fuel and high fuel oil temperature can be for diesel which is also dangerous to burn it uh, due to the low flash point so we need to keep everything on the proper range so we will not exceed the limits this is how looks the alarm panel on the auxiliary boilers this is the Mitsubishi type as you can see we have the date the time and the message number two boiler drum water level high number two boiler steam pressure high and vacuum condenser pressure cooling water and condensate pump both stop vacuum cooling seawater pump stop this is how the menu looks like there and you can run up and then press the main menu so you will go back to the main menu this is the boiler abnormal menu and as you let's say resolve your alarms they will go off and nothing will be on this page and then you can test as you can see boiler trips number one drum water level low low and for number two also so here we have a TDS sensor TDS sensor it's controlling the boiler water impurities so what TDS controls it controls the impurities which do not boil off with the steam as we told they're accumulated in the top of the surface of the boiler and later on it will not uh, let your water to boil off uh, as the boiler was clean and tidy at the beginning um, total dissolved sediments must be yes the proper word so that bubbles are created are more stable and burst when reach the water surface of the boiler boiler filled with the bubbles and foam carried over the steam main so uh, if we have these uh, sediments on the top of the boiler water it will create some rapid uh, small explosions because uh, the water state will be changed really really fast so there is an additional system and sensor here which sense all that one and what we have here we have a blow down valve so it will uh, when the sensor senses that there is increase of these uh, sediments in the water it will initiate the blown down valve to open and release that water you can take also samples here to see and this is the information about uh, the TDS controlling maybe you have seen it on your boiler maybe not also for me uh, this is something new uh, but we, we know that one because we made the scum blow down valve uh, yes uh, through the scum blow down valves on the top of the boiler and this is not so a, a new let's say a information about what is going on on the surface of the boiler so we need our boiler to be clean our water quality will be always controlled for the alkalinity ph chlorides and uh, the oxygen 
control of the boiler so the water quality will be good will be treated and also the water color quality it says a lot high level of dissolved damages let's say contamination of the control valves heat exchangers steam traps Forming also can be high alkalinity and contamination by oils and fats. The most common cause of carryover control of these factors, we can minimize risk of forming and carryover with all that TDS control. This will reduce all that um, risks. Of forming and carry over but carry over is the most dangerous thing when we have our turbines uh, working in the high speed and the water will be expelled there and damage our turbine measures to eliminate forming chemicals remove water and place with fresh feed water removing oil from the boiler water and by adding compounds here you can see that ethanol no conductivity so here we have high conductivity the lamps go on there is exchange of the ions and minus going to plus plus going to minus and here also if we have acetic acid solution low conductivity uh, there is a less exchange of the ions which is in the water so in some way here we have a control area and this we would like to uh, keep in the boiler okay the ideal will be <laughs> here no conductivity at all but to have low conductivity if there is high conductivity there is a lot of exchange uh, from one metal part to another so that means uh, our boiler uh, parts will be dissolved much much faster we have this conductivity sensor okay this is a conductivity sensor from one brand there can be also sensors supplied from the company uh, in, in other companies whatever brand okay we are not making any a advertisement anyway there is a lot of brands but uh, always know that there is a conductivity sensor and equilibrate to the same temperature as the sample clean the sensor with deionized water when you finished your test uh, and this is really really important so you can keep your equipment with the good uh, practice so this is a sensor this is also another conductivity meter conductivity of a neutralized sample at 25 so there is some example and this is how uh, the conductivity probe uh, is working there is a metal wa uh, body there is also some electrode separation between them temperature sensor and platinum electrodes that's why it's so expensive equipment because we have platinum electrodes ions uh, natrium and chlor are drawn towards the opposite charged platinum electrode this generates a very small current through the solution the meter measures this current and as the distance between the electrodes is known the conductivity can be calculated in uh, in s centimeter once the temperature compensation has been applied in an ideal system, this follows a no equation. In reality, French fields effects mean that the probe must be calibrated, especially as platinum electrodes age.
and here what is the conductivity is equals con distance distance between the electrodes plate area of electrodes this is how it will be calculated here we can see the pressure switch for high pressure alarm and shutdown so you can see uh, that there is some valves here and also some also connections that you can add there and test of your equipment let's see also how a different setups can be installed we have a hot well feed pumps control box so this is a simple control that we had in one of the bulk areas in the tankers it's much more a flexible system there is only a hot oil tank and where is a demand of the water when the level sensor sends that the water reduced the several level it will send the signal to the control box and the, from the control box the pumps will be started so another system is here it's a burner it's also a motor the pumps uh, can be run always in the first case we have a start and stop and in the second case they are always running in case that the motor here will be closed the water will go here and will be circulated if there is any need for water the motor will be open and some of the water will be fit to the water drum and we have also another system which is also it uh, can be with uh, variable pumps which also controlled from here uh, everything all the signal gets uh, received from the level sensor to the control box and then to the pumps so some additional information uh, as we can see the Alborg for that moment uh, this can be changed at, at the moment that you are viewing the video the total installation is 77% to the Alboc Industries, Mitsubishi Industries and all the other uh, boiler products. Maybe this has changed, but really, as I have heard, the bo boiler price of the Mitsubishi boilers are higher enough and more higher than twice of one Alboc. So maybe some of the ship owners, they prefer to put the Alboc system but really, I have worked with the Mitsubishi and I have not seen any, any problems. It's really reliable boilers and I believe it's much, much better than the Alborg. Here you can see another uh, image which shows which uh, model and type it's mostly installed on the vessels. And as you can see, this is the Mission Oil Boiler, Vertical Boiler, which is about the 54% of the total market so for today we can stop a little bit so you can absorb all that information and later on we will start with the internal part of the boilers what we can see and how the structure of the boilers um, are look like what we can see from the different point of view and from the side glasses and what is important for the operator to view and understanding how the boiler performs thank you again see you on the part three of the auxiliary boilers advanced course until then bye bye